We cannot allow Brooklyn to stay the most deadliest street in the city. That is unacceptable. And those 18 family members, I'm tired of seeing our streets adorned with white bikes to indicate and reflect when someone has lost their life because of a vehicle accident. The streets of yesteryears have changed. We now share our streets with bicyclists, skateboarders, and children who are often intimidated by the speeding and driving habits. And those who continue to abuse their driving, we heard it clear from the Department of Transportation when they indicated that a lot of these accidents are caused by reckless driving. And we need to look at and think outside the box as some of the legislation that's been introduced through the city council of putting sirens on plowed vehicles. Or to look at our speed cameras that we are having a difficult time navigating off in the legislative body to get more speed cameras. We have to fight to get street speed cameras in front of school buildings. How horrendous is that? And so these are challenging times, but we can lead the way. Lucy and Merriweather. He was an eight-year-old child who lost his life at DeKalb in Carlton. And we all gathered. It was on the night of the election. I'll never forget it. And throughout my career, the 10 years where I was in city council, we had so many memorials, too many. I chair the Committee on Public Safety, and certainly I am thankful for your presence here today. Understanding that Mayor de Blasio had an aggressive plan called Vision Zero, and this is a framework that's going to have critical conversations around safety for pedestrians, drivers, bicyclists, for all New Yorkers that are traveling on our streets. These are the types of conversations that we want to have, and we are here to hear your input and your concerns. Whether it be a movie star or singer, ask them to step up and do a public service announcement. I'm sure Britney Spears got out there and told you, cross the degree, not in the Our young people would be listening instead of drawing out between cars. But what's being done now is a total disaster. You're creating funnels, backing up traffic, and causing more accidents by people who think the world revolves around their sprinklers. And we've got to change that attitude. We've got to have enforcement in some means that penalizes them and really hits them in the head. We have 6,000 miles of roadways in New York, and, and I hear you. I get, we, we know that paint can do a lot, and it's a very cost-effective way to go. So we will be aggressively painting, but I, I guess I'll just see with a little patience, because it was a tough winter. It snowed a lot. Our crews are busy doing potholes. They're doing roadway repair. So now the painting season is upon us. More crossing guards. and. Trucks. Trucks need to get off these streets. They only need to be on truck routes and private buses as well that continue to go down streets illegally. There's a number of recommendations, but I know I've been limited to one minute. What I found while the state senator is that many people have made a calculative decision if they are intoxicated to leave the scene of an accident then stay because if you leave the scene of an accident it's a lesser crime if you stay and you, it is determined that you are intoxicated we need to make the law that to leave the scene of an accident that it is a understanding that you are intoxicated and you should be treated with that level of a felony and i believe then you will see a decrease in the number of people who participate in hit and runs the laws are too lax the person uh, conducts a hit and run and his property damage up only the police do not investigate that and this person is allowed to continue in their reckless driving yes i think that i believe that there's already a system that 311 is supposed to take pictures, but it does a great service when we utilize all of this technology to come up with ways how to quickly report hazardous and dangerous conditions. And so Twitter is great. Um, taking a photo and sending it over to um, DOT is great as well. Whatever mechanism we can utilize to identify a dangerous situation and to send it forward is, um, is what we need to do.
Is that something you'll ask uh, yes. the mayor? To yes. Okay, thank you. I think it's a lot of frustration, obviously. You know, we've discussed many things and many different ideas, including my legislation that would lower the speed limit on dangerous side streets. I think the frustration that really that you're hearing mostly from people is that the laws that are on books are not being enforced. I think that is what really frustrates people, and especially that there isn't the upkeep that you need, whether it's a broken sidewalk or whether it is the lines that are not clearly marked anymore and we have that all across the city, or the illegal parking that people mentioned, where people park on sidewalks, which is obviously unacceptable. I think we need a combination of enforcement, we need to change some laws off in Albany to give us the power in New York City. I think we just need a little bit more mutual respect, right? Some people really just don't have any consideration for their neighbors or pedestrians or cyclists. And as I pointed out, everybody has a part of this. Pedestrians need to be more responsible, cyclists need to be more responsible, but unfortunately it's the drivers who really can do the most damage because they are driving these cars and actually kill people. So if we're all a little bit more responsible, we work a little bit harder, and we have a little bit better enforcement, I think we can get to a much better place. Uh, you know, government is always a few years behind technology. I think we'll get there. I think for now you can actually report it online. And obviously you can report it by the phone, but we don't yet have a way for Twitter. I think part of the concern is that they're afraid that things are going to get lost on Twitter, which frequently happens. The message goes up, it comes down. Sometimes you don't see it versus when you do it online or via the phone, it gets logged. But certainly we have a long way to go to make sure that uh, technology catches up with bureaucracy. Well, it's a good broad-based discussion that we heard here tonight, and it's, and it's clear that with, with the population we have in this borough, that um, the pedestrian safety is a major issue in every part of this borough, and so we have to balance pedestrian safety and vehicular traffic, and that's our challenge right now, and that's what we hope that Vision Zero ends up with that kind of balance and no pedestrian, acts, uh, no pedestrian fatalities and certainly no pedestrian accidents. You heard inside, and somebody said it, there are bad apples. There are bad apples on both sides. There are bad apples as pedestrians, and bad apples as drivers. There are bad apples as bicyclists, too. Um, so, so it's those bad apples that, that really need that kind of education. Okay, now are you in favor of reducing the speed limit from 30 to 20, or you think 25? 25 at this point, we'll see. You know, that's, uh, I, 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 at this point, 25, except in schools, uh, we need more school crossing guards, we need more counting signals, and we also we didn't mention when parents walk the children, you know, we push the carriage in front of you. So we need to be careful when we push those carriages with our children inside to first look and then push the carriage. And, and about the pets, when you walk your pets, you cross the streets, it's not just human life. We got to think about our, our pets. And, um, you know, I just want to, to thank our chair uh, for hosting this event and uh, our borough president, our Brooklyn borough president, and I'd like to thank all the agencies that are here today. And I'm looking forward to working with each and every one of you to make our streets safer. Thank you. I think the most powerful thing I heard tonight was uh, in reframing some of the way we use language. We never thought about it before, but it's not an accident waiting to happen. If it's waiting to happen, it's a preventable crash waiting to happen. Prevent. People of Brooklyn want safer streets. Uh, luckily, Vision Zero, the mayor's plan, the NYPD, DOT, DLC, there's a deep commitment to move forward, to get enforcement, to get education, to get safer streets, to save more lives in Brooklyn. Um, if you have ideas, if you want to see things, reach out to me, reach out to other elected officials. We're going to follow up at the Now, as a council member, are you in favor of having Twitter being used as a way to inform the city of, let's say, potholes or bad locations? Because right now, it's an efficient tool, but the city uh, tweets back, call 311. But it's very efficient when someone tweets on the spot, picture of a pothole, let's say. Okay, this is the location. Uh, you know, uh, technologies are always evolving what the best one to use is. I, I, I'd love to see it work, but I'm also sympathetic that it needs to get in a database, it needs to be able to be tracked, it needs to be in a way they can follow up. So the city can make it work, the Twitter can feed it. Database can be geocoded that you can follow up easy, great. But
but it's obviously very important that they both get the contact information, you don't need your phone number, you don't need your email, so we may need to figure out some way of getting there.